Lars and Ravy just dropped some really big and exciting 4680 battery news updates. So stick around as I dive into these. You're not gonna wanna miss this. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Tesla has been working on 4680 batteries for somewhere around five years or so. And over the years they have struggled, but it looks like Tesla is finally making good progress. And we recently got some really big, exciting updates from Lars Moravi and Tesla's Q2 2024 investors conference call. So with that being said, without further ado, let me dive into what was revealed. During the conference call, Lars Moravi said, quote, 4680 production ramped strongly in Q2, delivering 51% more cells than Q1 while reducing COGS significantly. We currently produce more than 1,400 Cybertrucks of 4680 cells a week. A 51% increase from Q1. That's a nice, sizable increase, especially since the last update that we got in Tesla's Q1 2024 investors conference call. In that update, they had a production increase of somewhere around 18 or 20% over the previous quarter. So a 51% increase shows that Tesla is truly ramping up 4680 battery production. In addition, it's significantly here, and we'll talk about cost a little bit more later on in the video, but Lars Moravi specifically mentioned here while reducing COGS. Of course, COGS stands for cost of goods sold. So Tesla is making good progress on the cost of producing their batteries. That's very significant. Of course, I'll talk about that more later. Then he mentioned here the production number of producing more than 1,400 Cybertrucks worth of 4680 battery cells per week. That's a good increase based on the previous update that Tesla posted on X.com and also, as was mentioned in the previous conference call. Now, when Tesla first started sharing updates on their 4680 battery production, they were giving accumulative totals. And accumulative numbers are great, but they don't really indicate exactly where Tesla is in the production ramp. Whereas recently, Tesla has been sharing weekly production numbers, how many batteries they're able to produce in a week, in terms of cyber trucks. The last accumulative number that Tesla shared was on June 5th. And in this June 5th post, it was written, quote, congrats 4680 cell manufacturing team on building their 50 millionth battery cell at Giga Texas. Now, when it comes to those accumulative totals, if you look at how long it took Tesla to get from start to 10 million battery cells, and then from 10 million battery cells to 20 million battery cells, and then 20 million battery cells to 50 million battery cells, once again, accumulatively, if you add up the number of days there, that equates to over 600 days to get to their first 50 million battery cells. And as a reminder, 50 million battery cells is just a little bit over 4.5 gigawatt hours worth of batteries, assuming that each cyber cell has around 91 watt hours per battery. So while 50 million battery cells is a good number, once again, it took Tesla over 600 days to do that out of Gigafactory, Texas. However, now they are building them at a rate of around 100 million battery cells per year, and that number should be rapidly increasing in the coming months. So the last time that Tesla shared a weekly update I mentioned previously on X.com, in this post on the official Cybertruck X account, it was written, produced over 1K Cybertrucks worth of 4680 cells at Giga Texas last week. Once again, assuming 91 watt hours per battery cell and around 1,360 battery cells per Cybertruck battery pack, that past update equated to around 1.36 million 4680 battery cells being built per week or if you annualize that number, around 6.5 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. However, Lars Moravi mentioned now that they're producing over 1,400 Cybertrucks worth of 4680 batteries now per week. And of course, that's a nice increase from that past update. Once again, doing the math, that equates to over 1.9 million 4680 battery cells per week or an annual rate of around nine gigawatt hours of batteries per year. Now, yes, of course, I wish Tesla was producing a lot more battery cells by now. Once again, they're somewhere around five years into this. But based on what they've struggled with in the past, this is good news that they are increasing. And once again, a 51% or so increase from Q1 to Q2 is what Lars Moravi mentioned. 
that's a good increase. And as far as I understand, these numbers here are pretty much just for Gigafactory Texas production. And there was downtime switching over from the Model Y cells to the Cyber cells at Gigafactory Texas. And in addition, based on the previous update in the last conference call, the Q1 2024 conference call, it appears like right now they should be in the midst of ramping up line three of four battery lines at Gigafactory Texas in phase one. And eventually they're going to have eight production lines, eight battery production lines at Gigafactory Texas. So hopefully they're going to be in the future producing at least 100 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. Of course, that's the number that we've talked about in the past. It appears like that was the original goal for battery production at Gigafactory Texas. So hopefully in the somewhat not too distant future, they'll be able to ramp up to somewhere around 100 gigawatt hours per year. And of course, at a rate of around nine gigawatt hours per year, they still have quite a bit to go, but it looks like they're making great progress towards that. And once again, they're still in the process of ramping up additional battery production lines. With that being said, Lars Moravi also recently shared some important updates when it comes to 4680 battery cost. He mentioned, we'll continue to ramp upward as we drive cost down further toward the cost parity target we set for the end of the year. Now, if you've been watching my videos on 4680 batteries, you know that target that Lars was referring to, but just in case you missed that, in the previous conference call, Lars Moravi mentioned that they were working to beat the cost of their suppliers for nickel-based cells, and that they were trying to do that by the end of the year. Elon Musk reiterated that goal in that past conference call when he said, quote, as Lars said, we think it will exceed the competitiveness of suppliers by the end of this year, and then we'll continue to improve. But it looks like this was actually much more than just a goal. It was more of an ultimatum because as I reported previously in this late post article, it mentioned specifically that this was more of a, if you don't get that cost down by the end of the year, we may cancel the 4680 battery program altogether. With that being said though, based on what Lars Moravi went on to share, I don't believe that Tesla is going to have to cancel their 4680 battery program because I believe they will meet their goal. And one of the key reasons why I believe that is because Lars Moravi confirmed a previous report that I talked about in a previous video, and that's the confirmation that Tesla has apparently solved the dry manufacturing process for cathodes. That's huge and it's really important for driving down the cost of 4680 batteries. Now, I previously reported this based on this late post article where it was specifically mentioned, quote, we learned that the design of the dry process positive electrode 4680 battery has been finalized recently, which is the first step before large scale mass production. Tesla's battery department will then make every effort to improve production yield and efficiency and expand production capacity. Later on in the article, it was also written, a person close to Tesla said that the reason why the battery department has recently gained confidence is that they believe that they have passed the most difficult stage of research and development, and the next step will mainly be engineering optimization issues. With that being said, Lars Moravi confirmed pretty much that that report is true when he mentioned, quote, we've built our first validation Cybertruck with dry cathode process made on mass production equipment, which is a huge technical milestone, and we're super proud of that. So this really is a big deal because not only is Tesla testing these battery cells in a Cybertruck, but notice specifically that he mentioned that this dry cathode process was, quote, made on mass production equipment. So of course, Maxwell Technologies had been working on this dry process previous to Tesla. And most likely they were able to get this process to work on the cathode side at very low volume. But specifically here, Lars is making clear that these batteries came off of mass production equipment, meaning that they're actually able to mass produce these 4680 battery electrodes, the cathode sides with the dry process. So once again, that report from late post was apparently correct that Tesla is confident that they've actually solved this process, this process, not only on the engineering of just making it work, but at a mass production level, it looks like they're going to be able to ramp this up. Of course, there may still be issues that crop up, but they're five years into this process or so. So I have a lot of confidence when they mention this and they have this kind of confidence, it gives me confidence that they will actually be able to do this and mass produce batteries with these cathodes.
Now, of course, previously Tesla had already figured out how to make the anodes of the batteries with their dry manufacturing process. That was apparently the easy side and the cathode side has been much more difficult. And one of the big problems they had was damaging the rolling equipment when they were manufacturing those cathodes because that cathode material was so hard. They've apparently done a workaround and they figured out how to get around that based on what I mentioned in a previous video. Um, but it's important that we notice why this is such a big deal is because dry manufacturing for the cathode side not only has been extremely difficult, but the cathode side of the battery is a lot more expensive than the anode side of the battery. And a lot of that has to do with the expensive components in that. So with Tesla able to produce this in-house with a very efficient method, the dry manufacturing method, this should allow Tesla to meet their cost targets with their batteries because I believe previously the 4680 batteries that they've been producing, they were purchasing electrode rolls from companies like LG. This is what has been reported in the past and they were having to pay a markup not only for those products, because of course LG and any other company they buy these from has to make a profit, but in addition to that, those cathodes were made with a wet process, which is a lot more expensive and less efficient. Of course, as a reminder, at battery day back in 2019, Tesla showed this graphic with the typical electrode manufacturing wet process, and you can see all the steps here and the extra equipment there. But when it comes to the dry process, it's much more efficient. It leads to a 10 times footprint reduction and a 10 times energy reduction, and of course, a cost reduction as well. So with this step in mind, this is really the final key piece of producing 4680 batteries at a very efficient level. Of course, they needed to master the tabless technology and they apparently have done that. They uh, did optimize the battery cell itself with that redesigned battery cap, which made room for more electrode jelly roll. Of course, the anode side has been produced with a dry process and that seems to be working. It looks like based on previous reports that Tesla has started using a little bit of silicon in the anode to increase the energy density. And now they are producing cathodes with this dry manufacturing process. So that really kind of completes the big key technologies with their 4680 batteries. And once again, this should allow them to start really seeing the benefits at scale once they are able to scale this up a little bit, some of the cost and manufacturing benefits that they mentioned at battery day. And these batteries should be much more efficient to produce than competitors batteries. So Tesla really should be able to reach this goal of beating suppliers cost by the end of this year. And at scale, that could be by a pretty big margin. As for when Tesla actually hopes to put these batteries in a production vehicle with the dry processed electrodes, Lars Moravi mentioned, we're on track for production launch with the dry cathode in Q4. And this will enable cell cost to be significantly below available alternatives, which was the original goal of the 4680 program. So this is really big news that by the end of this year, Tesla is on track to have 4680 batteries in this Cybertruck that will have cathodes that were manufactured with this dry process. And that's going to be huge for them getting the cost down for these 4680 batteries. So of course, yes, they still have to scale up this process, but since they're like five years into this process and they appear really confident with it this time, I believe that we should have more confidence in Tesla actually doing this. They're showing that they can scale up 4680 battery production and it looks like they really have achieved it this time and I believe they will meet their goal by the end of the year of not only producing these batteries and putting them in um, actual production cyber trucks but also producing these batteries at a cost lower than suppliers. So I really believe that 2025 is going to be a big breakout year for 4680 battery production and in addition one of the reasons why I'm so excited is because now that Tesla has solved the key basic technologies of producing these batteries the engineers can now focus their time more on actually improving the 4680 battery cell meaning improving the charging performance of the battery cell and also improving the energy density of the battery cells themselves. So this is really important and really exciting, but do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.